Do you want to ace the MMI, the type of interview that almost every single medical school in Canada uses to determine whether you can get into medical school? You first need to know what the MMI is all about. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews and it's divided into a series of stations and each station gives you a question, some prep time and some time to answer the question. A really important thing to keep in mind is that every station is marked by a different interviewer. We're going to tell you why that's important in just a bit. You can be asked almost any type of question on the MMI. Part of the reason as to why it's so brutal. For example, you can have ethical dilemmas, personal reflection questions, collaboration stations, and even role play. The MMI is scored based on one, your ability to communicate, two, how well your responses reflect the CANMEDS rules, which are the characteristics that Canadian medical schools look for in aspiring physicians, and three, if you're suitable for medicine or not. That's why the first thing you want to do if you want to score well on your MMI is to focus on your communication skills. You have to speak clearly, sound confident, and also have positive body language. This will enable you to convey your message effectively to the interviewer and get it across a more favorable impression that will end up being very good for you. To help you speak clearly, practice tongue twisters, like how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. They help you enunciate words, which improves pronunciation. Another thing you can do that is an absolute must is positive body language. That includes maintaining eye contact, upright body posture, appropriate hand movements, and also positive facial expressions. Practicing with others and recording your answers and watching them back can help you perfect all of these things. Remember when Nimit said each station is assessed by different interviewers? That means if you mess up on one station, it's still not over for you. You can still go to another station and make up for it because you'll be meeting completely different people. When it comes to what you should say in the interview, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First of all, you want to be professional. The interviewers are not going to appreciate it if you talk to them like you're their best friend. At the same time, you don't want to be overly professional. You don't want to use overly big words like fastidious or gasconade because that's just going to end up confusing the interviewers and leading to a lower score. Next, and quite possibly the most important tip of this video, is to structure your questions. For example, for ethical scenarios, make sure you start off with an intro where you explain the prompt, followed by explaining your information gathering steps, then you can follow up with explaining your courses of action, and then you can end off with a definite conclusion, which includes your chosen course of action. You'll find that if you structure questions in this way or any other way, you'll actually stay on track and answer the question. Another important fact for ethical scenarios is learn biomedical ethics right now. It's how physicians make their healthcare related decisions and you're bound to face them in healthcare related scenarios. So why not approach them like a doctor? For example, the four principles approach can be used to answer pretty much any healthcare related scenario. It includes beneficence, non-maleficence, justice, and autonomy. I recommend reading the book called Doing Right, or you could read University of Washington's Bioethics Guide for more information. You'll also want to include buzzwords in your answers, and that will cue the interviewer in on what trait you're exactly talking about. And the buzzwords can be any of the CANMEDS rules. So for example, let's say you helped someone. Instead of saying you helped someone, say you advocated for them. An advocate is one of the CANMEDS rules, so this will simply make it easier for the interviewer to evaluate you in terms of that trait. This tip is for personal questions, like what's your greatest failure? What you want to do is write down your five experiences that you think you can connect most on and that you can talk most about. Once you write these down, think of experiences you've had for these experiences so that you can use them to answer any question. Essentially, the interviewers are trying to get to know you. And if you do this, you're going to get to know yourself more and see what you actually learn from these experiences rather than the superficial stuff of what you were actually doing in the experience. To help you pick out your experiences, think about how they relate to the CANMEDS roles and which experiences best represent them. For example, I talked a lot about my time as part of a not-for-profit organization that supports the homeless because it taught me so much about advocacy and leadership, two skills that are absolutely essential for becoming a doctor. For policy questions, it can really help if you had background knowledge about the specific policy that they're talking about. For example, mandatory vaccination of healthcare workers against COVID-19 was a really hot topic in last year's interviews. Not only will learning about these healthcare topics help you talk about them, but the interviewers would actually be super impressed by your knowledge and your passion about the healthcare field. So today, right now, 
go subscribe to healthcare related channels like Medboys, um, <coughs> say BAC Health, um, Medboys, um, <coughs> say B24, and Medboys. If the news isn't your thing, then there's this podcast called White Coat Black Art, and it really helps in relation to healthcare topics. We've also linked a lot of resources in the description below that might help you with healthcare policies. We mentioned earlier that you should practice with other people. But you might be thinking, Naman, shouldn't I just practice with other med students or interviewees? Why would I bother my friends and family? Believe it or not, your interviewers could actually just be regular community members, and your friends and family actually represent that population. That's why it's super important for their opinion to matter when it comes to evaluating how you present yourself and what you actually say. The MMI is no different than a job interview when we say that there are certain questions that are way more likely to be asked over others. For example, tell us about a time where you overcame a significant challenge is a really good question because it allows you to talk about yourself as a person quite a lot to the interviewer. That's why you should prepare for these high yield questions and we'll link a document in the description containing some of them for you. Lastly, we'll leave you with this. You want to prep as hard as you can because this is one of the most important things you can do in your life. However, you also don't want to over prepare. An approach you can use is the read, write, and prepare technique. So first of all, you spend the first hour reading through health policies or listening to white coat black art. Then you spend another hour writing down responses to questions or maybe evaluating responses that you previously wrote down. And finally, in that last hour, you practice verbally with a friend or by yourself when you're recording. So your practice should not go over this three hour mark. I'm saying this because you don't want to sound robotic. And if you've rehearsed every single question and every single line, that's what it's gonna come across as. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you guys want specific strategies on how to approach different questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you right away. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next Monday.